both perform and listen to music, seeking a way and means to escape normal everyday life. Music can capture people's attention in a way that brings them to another place and has been used to invoke human emotion. If one listened to their own past experience of listening to music, most would conclude it has the ability to invoke human emotion to the point where it can change perception, mood, and behavior towards something or someone. Another element that has the same ability to change perception, mood, and behavior is video. Hi, I'm Matt Farrell, and today we're going to take a look deeper into the effects that music and video has on human emotion. Well, music as, a, as an influencer on emotion uh, is, has been around. It's something that we know about since the beginning of time. You go back to uh, the caveman era, and uh, we know that rhythm played a huge part in, in existence. Rhythm plays a huge part. Uh, melody plays a huge part. It's been this way from the beginning of time, really, this uh, relationship that human beings have to music, organized sound. It's specific notes and specific undertones that appeal to certain parts of our emotion. It's certain frequencies that appeal to our understanding of a given situation. It's certain frequencies that are annoying, that make us get agitated and have a heightened sense of awareness. Certain uh, frequencies affect us differently, um, and that relates to keys, this, this general perception that uh, uh, major keys make you feel happy and minor keys make you feel sad. That all has to do with sound waves. It's all part of the musical track. It's all part of the score. It's all part of the foley or the, or the, you know, the special effects. But it's a very complicated part that we as humans don't necessarily listen to, but subconsciously we interpret it because that's where our emotions are coming from. In my opinion, the difference between a major and a minor uh, said is that if you're playing in major then it produces a more happy um, I guess you know a non-depressing tone while if you're playing in a minor then it gives you a more depressing darker sound. There's songs that change your mood make you smile and make you laugh there's songs that make you sad can make you cry almost um, honestly it's all in the preference of how you take it and where where you think the songwriter is coming from. For performing musicians, professional musicians, we see this almost every day. We see how we see firsthand how music affects people emotionally, if it's great music, how it affects them even spiritually. We see the results every day. Since music itself is not visual, you don't see the sound waves coming at you. We tend to maybe take it for granted and we tend to not necessarily look at it in scientific terms. We see it, we're, we're around it so much. There's no question in our minds that uh, music has an effect to make people happy, sad, excited, uh, thoughtful. It, um, d depending on what type of music it is, uh, it can affect people differently. I believe that um, sounds themselves can influence the mood. You know, faster paced music will, you know, will keep you moving. Slower paced music is, has sort of a calming effect. Um, I know there's a certain song that every time I hear it, um, I feel like running to. I believe music has the ability to change my mood because, uh, I mean, I can listen to things that will just, you know, it's so beautiful it makes me cry or I can listen to like Peace Train by Cat Stevens and it makes me happy when I'm just so depressed, you know. I guess it depends on um, the beat, the tone of the voice, you know, flats and sharps. The power that music has to stimulate emotions is inevitable. I believe that other multimedia elements also have the same ability to invoke human emotion. Since music is considered to be only one part of a multimedia experience, it is my belief that when a person is exposed to music along with other forms of multimedia, like video, it can heighten their mood, perception, and behavior towards something or someone. This is all dependent upon the similarities that the visual and aural elements have to one another. Audio's, you know, it gives a, a whole lot of meaning to, to, uh, to very emotional stuff in film. Just like the earlier films and videos require, or, or maybe depended on um, very uh, symphonic renditions, 
and you can get this by watching old TV and you look at old TV and you think, wow, you know, the theme songs were great. I mean, they were rich and they were, they were really cool. But I really liked some of the new ones. And it's hard to understand why you like some of the new ones. And possibly the reason is because they're not really great works of music, but they contain an unbelievable amount of audio information. And, it's, and a lot of it's imperceptible. I believe that um, people can actually be more in touch with music and be more familiar with music that they can associate it to something else. You know, like, uh, I, I think that uh, the normal sounds of everyday life that's incorporated in music is like a very creative way of getting people to relate to that music more, you know, like, uh, I mean, and, and, and you can do anything to make a rhythm, a, a leaky faucet, you know, uh, you know, a clanging of a wrench on an engine. There's sounds that we're more familiar with, you know, there's sounds that we've been hearing since we were in, you know, in the womb, you know, there are just sounds that, in uh, tones that we, enjoy. If you're watching a motion picture or, a, or a, a video experience, whether it's a multimedia video experience or, you know, whatever it might be, it might be a graphic inter uh, experience. You know, when lightning strikes, we'll use that as an example, when lightning strikes, you, you, tend, you tend to shy away. Well, the video could make you do that, but audio can make you do it in time. So when an event happens on the screen, that is dramatic enough for the audio to actually preempt the, re the reaction that you're gonna have to the visual that you're getting ready to see in, the, in a space of a thousandth of a second. Um, and it makes it a more natural and more engaging experience. You know, you watch certain movies and you know, you have people listening to songs and it sort of carries them off to another place, just listening to it. I had that experience once and um, I believe that putting a video to it as long as it goes along with the, the I guess the theme of the song you know the, the theme of the music then it sort of enhances that um, perception and uh, can uh, make it stronger. For years producers have used music to reference specific visuals seen on screen in order to enhance perception for the viewer. These visual and aural juxtapositions known as Mickey Mousing could be something as simplistic as a guitar creating the sound of a mouse walking across screen. A classic example of this technique can be seen in the 1960 horror classic by Alfred Hitchcock known as Psycho. In the, in the Psycho shower scene, which is one of the famous ones, the, uh, and incidentally the, the music's by Bernard Herrmann, uh, it, there's, there's a great uh, tension that's built up visually and having that shrieking violin sound actually it's a very uh, different, unusual sort of um, uh, fingernails on the chalkboard kind of sound. It, it works uh, orally because you have the, uh, the violins sort of screaming as she's being stabbed, so you've got that. It, it could, you could almost imagine it as a uh, uh, human voice screaming. And it's a great example of, in film music, it's actually called Mickey Mousing, where you have a, uh, a, a, a sound, excuse me, music that's imitating some actual action. In my studies of, of the historical parts of, of audio and film and motion picture and stuff is, you know, one of the things that everybody tries to capture, and it's because it's a, it's a true human emotion, you know, in war, war sounds different than peace. And there's a reason. Music sounds different than what you, what you do in your head. You know, angry conversations sound different than pleasurable conversations. Love sounds different than hate. And it's all about intonation tonal quality. It's all about, you know, the, the type of experience. So far, we've discussed how music and video can affect a person's mood, and how the meaning behind audio and video can effectively change a person's perception. Another aspect of this is the effects that music and video have on a person's behavior. A lot of the way we act, we get through watching others. 
and stuff like that. Music can inspire you to do things. I've seen, uh, you know, stuff in like games. If you like watch it over and over again, you know, or do the same thing, then uh, it makes you want to, you know, sort of implants the subconscious thought that that's something to do. You know, um, so, uh, and I think if you combine them, it just makes that much more potent. I've listened to songs that have made me do things that I normally wouldn't do, honestly. Um, there's songs that just make me want to sit down and not do anything, honestly. It could have something to do with the way you act and the way you do things. It all depends on how you take it and how you, you know, visualize it in your mind and what you want to do with how you listen to it. Well, if they're playing in major, then like, say it's an advertisement or, you know, wanting you to go buy something, then it's going to make you, you know, more want the product or it's like, it's going to make you want to do what the advertisement is telling you what to do. Other than like, if it's like, say it's a, a commercial about, you know, you know, funding for people like the kids in I, like Iraq or places in like poverty, if they play the, the slow, depressing music that's in minor, and it's gonna make you more likely, you know, to give money to that, you know, foundation. Different pitches in the tune and key changes and things like that really inspire me to uh, do everything from art at the moment to clean my house. The main thing is there's just this huge uh, stimulus that we have from music. And I believe that it affects people so strongly because it, it's, it's total brain involvement. Uh, think about any, what sort of art form, what sort of anything can physically make you move without actually physically touching you. If you think if you go to any rock and roll concert, if you're just sitting listening to music, how often do we start tapping our toes or moving around and there's nothing actually physically pushing us. Uh, it's, it's that sort of power that uh, these sound waves have. All the different moods and things that people portray in their music actually rubs off on other people, you know, just like a smile is contagious. The audio and video industry has evolved immensely since the days of the silent film era. Yet even from the early stages of this industry to the present day, music and video go hand in hand as a collaborative form of media that pulls from all of our senses and emotions. In the old days when films were silent, they always had music accompanying them. It was, it was even, even in the silent film era, you had to have music. Well, they couldn't put it on the film. There wasn't, the film wasn't that advanced, so they had uh, pit bands and pit orchestras and organists, and uh, music and visuals just go hand in hand. Probably, if one were to do uh, more research, I would imagine that the visual stimulus that you have, say, watching a film, uh, affects the brain differently. And I wouldn't be surprised if um, we almost need this more complete um, brain interaction uh, with sound accompanying what we see visually. And I'm sure that plays a big part in, in when the two work together. I think with the quality of audio in it, in it right now, which you know is, is a pinnacle in anybody's estimation, um, the syllabants, the communication, you know, communicating ideas. You, you go and watch documentaries, you know, from, from the early days of motion picture. And a lot of it is not communicated very well because you simply can't hear it. Uh, none of the emotion is communicated because um, there's, there's very little that, there's, there's, there's very little bandwidth to communicate on. You know, that, that just wasn't there. So now that it is there, I think it opens us up to a whole lot more experimentation in video and in film because it gives us the opportunity. Um, you know, we had to rely on 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 an explosion as a vi an explosion, for example, as a visual event. Now it's not only a visual event, but it's an auditory event. It's a sonic event. It's a sensory perception event. It's a tactile event. In my research about the effects of congruency between music and video on mood perception and behavior, I created an experiment to measure the level of mood perception and behavior that a person exhibits after watching a television commercial. I created three different television commercials that all have the same video promoting the Mulberry River. The difference between them was in the music. 
Commercial number one had music that I composed in the key of A major, testing for a happy mood, a perception of similarities between the music and video, as well as a positive behavior toward the commercial content. Commercial number two was in the key of A minor, testing for a more solemn and sedate mood, a perception of dissimilarities between the music and video, as well as a negative behavior toward the commercial content. Commercial number three had no music and was used as a control variable to see what the mood, perception, and behavior was toward the commercial content alone. Each of the participants in the experiment watched only one of the commercials and filled out a questionnaire that had five questions pertaining to perception, five for mood, and five for behavior, with five more questions pertaining to demographics. The following are examples of the commercials used within the experiment. The Mulberry has it all. Uh, the best whitewater river in Arkansas. It's one of the prettiest rivers in the state. It's the atmosphere that's gorgeous. It's some of the best water in Arkansas. The river is beautiful and it's absolutely gorgeous, but the people and the river together make this river what it is. The Mulberry is a national wild and scenic river. It will remain free flowing forever. The waters of the Mulberry run through my veins. The best whitewater river in Arkansas. It's one of the prettiest rivers in the state. It's the atmosphere that's gorgeous. It's some of the best water in Arkansas. The river is beautiful and it's absolutely gorgeous, but the people and the river together make this river what it is. The Mulberry is a national wild and scenic river. It will remain free flowing forever. Waters of the Mulberry run through my veins. The Mulberry has it all. Uh, the best whitewater river in Arkansas. It's one of the prettiest rivers in the state. It's the atmosphere that's gorgeous. It's some of the best water in Arkansas. The river is beautiful and it's absolutely gorgeous, but the people and the river together make this river what it is. The Mulberry is a national wild and scenic river. It will remain free flowing forever. Waters of the Mulberry run through my veins. If you listen closely to the music that I compose in these commercials, you can hear a slight variation in sound between the major and the minor modes of music used within these commercials. The results of the experiment supported hypothesis number one, predicting that perception can be altered by music that references similarities in the video. There were significant differences between the participants' perception of commercial number one with major music as the congruent condition, number two with minor music as the incongruent condition, and number three with no music. The the experiment also resulted in support for hypothesis number two that predicted major modal music creates a happier mood and minor modal music creates more of a solemn and sedate mood when applied to video with congruous elements. There were significant differences between the participants mood after viewing commercial number one with major music as the congruent condition, number two with minor music as the incongruent condition, and number three with no music. However, hypothesis number three resulted in only partial support which predicted major and minor modal music edited with congruous video elements would have an effect on a person's behavior towards something such as visiting the Mulberry River. There are significant differences between the participants' behavior intentions in the congruent condition of commercial number one with major music and with commercial number three that contain no music. Yet participants' behavioral intention in the incongruent condition of commercial number two with minor music was not significantly different either from the intention in the congruent music condition of commercial number one or the intention in the no music condition of commercial number three. This research is proof that music can correspond with human emotion and is a crucial component to enhancing any other multimedia element, such as video. Ultimately, going, going back to the beginning of time, to the present day, music exists to um, communicate to us on a different level than how we're speaking. I mean, communication is fine, we, we do this day to day, but there's certain things that we can't really describe or if, if we're talking about uh, you, you can you can talk about being in love with someone all you want to but it actually even uh, is more convincing when you hear Romeo and Juliet of Tchaikovsky or a love song it gets you in that way that uh, the words the words can't quite uh, do there are of course great um, poets uh, and, and, and people who write like Shakespeare who get close there's there's almost the music in, in that sort of uh, language but music's filling that void. In general, I think that, that sound communicates 
one part of your entire set of senses. I mean, really, it's, it's, it, you have to have sound to communicate the concept and the idea to, to move your message because it enhances what's on the screen. You know, if you, if you look at um, a learning experience in video and you can, you can give somebody something to read on a screen like a computer or in a video or in a, in a training film and they can read it and their comprehension level is however well they read. If you have merely a voice reading the exact same thing that's on the screen, the comprehension level goes way, way up. If you have just the voice, the comprehension level is whatever you get from listening. So they complement each other in those terms. I think that it reinforces the communication of the visual aspect of the screen. I think it gives you some indications for mood and for subtlety or severity or whatever the mood that they're trying to, to move with the picture, you know, to create with the visual part of the picture. Uh, it certainly enhances that or even creates it all. You know, there, I think there's a lot of times now um, when audio used to complement video. And I think now the scales have kind of been tipped where there's a lot of times that the video complements the audio. It really does. And it's that important now.